Happy playoff basketball, everyone. The postseason has arrived. Thank you for joining us on Mark's Manus alongside Mark Schein. I'm Matt Finkel, and we get it started tonight. Tuesday yep. night, sectional semifinals all around the region. More tomorrow on Wednesday, and working our way towards the sectional finals over the weekend. But Mark, before we talk about the beginning of the postseason, which we've got plenty to break down <laughs> about, I want to talk about Lima Senior yep. because they've been the lead of this show every week as they should be and they completed the perfect regular season this weekend defeating Clay and then Mansfield Senior 22 and 0 14 and 0 in the league they got Clay by 28 Mansfield Senior by 12 first ever undefeated regular season for the Spartan boys basketball team. Yeah, that's quite an accomplishment. Obviously what Coach Simpson's done, he's got tremendous talent and players, but he's used them well. He's had some situations where guys didn't play in games through injury, illness, suspension, whatever. He still managed to keep them undefeated. That's a nice job. Xavier Simpson scored 41 yep. against Mansfield Senior, another amazing individual performance. But the fact that Lima Senior has completed the undefeated regular season, it begs the question, <laughs> is this the best Lima Senior boys basketball team Ever. Well, Matt, we're going to have to wait and answer that when the tournament season comes to an end. Uh, obviously, there have been some very, very talented teams that have gone deep in the tournament, but no one's ever won a championship, at least in the state of Ohio, in, in, from Lima Senior. And if you look at Lima Senior people, they judge your season on how you do in the tournament. Now, obviously, they've been they're undefeated now, and that's a great accomplishment. But in Lima, you better do well in the tournament. I, I played, I, I can attest to that. I played on the team in 1970, had just one loss. Uh, we didn't have any superstars like we do with Xavier Simpson today. Had one loss, had five players averaging double figures, lost in the regionals. And if you ask Lima senior fans, some of their best teams, they never mention it because they didn't do well in the tournament, they only got to the regionals. Yeah, state runners up and state semifinalists yep. a couple of times. And the hopes are high for this season without a doubt. And congrats to Jalen Thomas, who went yep. over 1,000 career points on Saturday as well. A nice individual accomplishment for him. Well, there's two ways to look at that. One is he got a lot of those points was at Shawnee as a freshman and, and early on in his career, but he has then come into Lima Senior and fit into the mold and kind of taken a step backwards a little bit. I know he had 30 the other night when Simpson didn't play, but he's taken a step backwards a little bit and become a real team player to the fact where he maybe only gets 10, 12, 14 points a game and he could score more in different situations. Spartans opened the postseason against Fremont Ross. Remember what yeah. Xavier did the last two times they played right. Fremont Ross? So that should be an interesting game to watch come come tournament time for Lima Senior. Yeah, they, they're going to, have to play them uh, Wednesday night. And obviously, if you're if you're Fremont Rosh playing overtime on Monday, now you got to go back to Toledo Central Catholic again on Wednesday and facing that particular situation, probably start baseball practice on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about LCC yeah. now because a tough weekend for them. Right. They got Spencerville by 18 on Friday and then Defiance by 11 on the road. And that's, you know, we talked about that should be a good test for the T-Birds. Boy, did they pass. They really did. Mark Miller and I talked about that during the game. Congratulations to Coach Kill and his group because they went out and scheduled as good as you can schedule for not being in a conference. And that includes playing a Saturday right before the tournament starts against a top-rated Division II team and a defending state champion. And congratulations for them to going out and schedule like they did and really have a great regular season for them as well. Interesting that the game against the Bearcats was more physical than I've seen the T-Birds play. I mean, Trey Cobb scored a career-high 29, Walton with 18 and 11 rebounds, Dixon 16. Meanwhile, Goki and Nurse scored a lot, 21 and 20 for each of them two for the Bearcats. But that's a different style for LCC. I think they were more physical on Friday and then maybe more run and gun on Saturday, trying to change up the pace against Defiance. Well, Mark Miller and I talked about that during the course of the game on Saturday night and the fact that they were able to prove they could win in multiple different ways. A more physical, rough and tumble game, power inside and rebound to basketball as opposed to the defense and transition game that we see from them so often. And now at this point in the season, you've got your plays and your sets yep. down. And LCC yeah. demonstrated that in the game against Defiance. Why don't you show us in your play breakdown what they were able to do well, against the Bulldogs. As we, let's first of all, let's look at, at this uh, little offensive set right here that's going to come up. Uh, this is a zone offense. Here's a pass going to go to the top of the circle right there. Bounce pass down inside and a score by Williams inside. Boy, is Thomas Williams really playing well right now. But if we have a chance to look at it again, watch how well the passing is done. First of all, you run a shooter to the corner. That takes Cam Singleton out to guard him. Here's the high pass, the dump pass down inside before the defense can react. That is an excellent offensive play, and I think Coach Kill called that. We were sitting on the sidelines, heard him call that. Here's a transition run out. Here's the rebound, and watch how fast Trey Cobbs gets down the floor. Runs past two guys and then just blows right by the defender. You're typically thinking at this point in time he's going to go right-handed. That's what he is. But instead, he gets right about to the free throw line area and watch him explode with the left hand to the goal and blow right by three more guys. He's just a tremendous player, having a great year, and particularly the second half of his season. And then one more play, and this is something that seems like we see every week from Dan Tez Walton. Here's anticipation and steal. 
plays the passing lane down. Here's the flush at the other end. And he's just, he's done that so often that has the ability to get out in the passing lane, anticipate right there. Looks like there's an open receiver. Not, he gets the steal and transition basket the other end. Dantes makes it look very easy as he has all season. So LCC finishes 21 and one. Very yep. impressive. Again, no league for them. So they're focused on the postseason. On the other side of that defiance, though, they had a tough weekend because not only did they lose to LCC on Saturday, they lost to Shawnee on Friday, Friday. and it yep. cost them the outright league title. Talked to Kirk Lehman before the game on Saturday night, and he said, you know, Shawnee did to us what we've been doing to teams for years, and that is execution late in the basketball game. The finest couple key turnovers, which Shawnee then took advantage of. Congratulations for them to winning that game into overtime. Defiance still gets to share the championship with Ottawa Glendorf. They need to get healthy going into the tournament. Uh, Strasbaugh was in a car accident. He played both nights, but not to his effectiveness level. And Frederick's been out with Mono. They'd like to get him back for the tournament. They would like to have all the arrows in the quiver before they get into the tournament. Speaking of late game execution, the Bulldogs led by eight with a minute 46 to play, and that's when Shawnee went yep. on that 8-0 run. Overtime, double overtime. Indians got the win, used that nice home crowd, a little momentum. Yep. That's a good win for the Indians on senior night as yeah, it well. It really is. It's a great win to do that on senior night. It kind of validates things you've been doing all year long and really sets you up to go into the tournament feeling good about yourself. All right, you mentioned OG gets a share because mm -hmm. they beat St. Mary's 87-39. So, Titans, that's why you play it out, right? You're thinking, right. oh, we're down, we're down, we're down. All of a sudden, we're the league champs sharing it with Defiance. Well, you play nine games for a reason. You play nine Friday nights for a reason, and that is we're going to figure out who's going to win this thing by winning nine games. And that's what happened. You have the I guess you'd call it an upset with Shawnee over Defiance, but OG just keeps hanging in there and they get a piece of the crown. Elida over Bath 55-53, especially interesting because those teams play each other again Tuesday, tonight, right. yep. in the tournament. In Paldy. And if you're a Bath Wildcat fan, I've heard it like 10 times over the weekend, he was out of bounds when he <laughs> caught the basketball and shot it. It shouldn't have counted. Well, that's a Bath viewpoint. So. It counts for press, making that three out of the corner, and a good win for them sets up the game this week. Also the rubber match, because remember yep. they played in the tip-off. Absolutely. Yep, so that one should be good. And then Wapak Salina. Wapak beat Van Wert this week on Friday, yep. and Salina beat Kenton. They're both coming off wins for their matchup on Tuesday at Lima Senior. I know you're going to do that game with Mark, and, and Salina won seven out of the last eight games, and it started with a win over Wapak by three. Uh, it's really playing well. Both teams are right now. Wapak's won their last three. Salina again won seven out of eight. That'll be a good game tonight. Another league that was not decided until the final weekend was the yep. BVC with Lipsrick and Liberty Benton, both 8-1 and one coming in. They both won, so they share the title, 10-1 and one in the league. It was the Vikings over Hopewell Loudon in Fort Jennings this weekend. Hopewell Loudon, of course, the league yep. game. Liberty Benton beat PG by 17. Yep, and I think Lipsrick's in a good spot to have a great tournament run. We can kind of get into some tournament stuff in that particular bracket a little bit later on, but that's like a really good tournament that they're in right now. Yeah, Lipsick, Liberty Benton, Arlington, yep. Van Buren, they're all either a 1-2 or 3 seed. Yeah. And they're not all in the same district, of right. course, but who's going the furthest? Because those, are the, those wow. are the top four in, in the BBC, I believe. First of all, I think Liberty Benton's got a great, great draw. Now, they were seeded number one, so we can kind of bracket them out. It looks like they would have to win uh, you know, a couple of games, obviously, and upsets can occur. They look like they're headed for the district finals, but at the other end, what a great bracket that is. Because first of all, you start out, what if Columbus Grove plays Lipsick? Now, Lipsick's won 15 out of 16 games. The one loss, Columbus Grove Gross. by a point. So right there, you've got a situation Setting out there most probably is Crestview for the winner of that matchup. Crestview, of course, has won seven in a row, five of those with Mefford back. Mefford's averaging almost 14 points a game, 13.8 in the five games he's been back. That whole bottom bracket and who gets to play Liberty Benton looks like a tremendous matchup. Looking forward to that one. Yes. It's going to be fun how it plays out. And congrats to Lipsick's Jordan Brown, who also went over 1,000 career yes, points. Yes, he did. He's had a really good career and, and obviously scores well from them. And, and that's when we we'll talk about Van Buren as well. I mean, yeah. Van Buren's playing really well. Sony, of course, he's had, uh, what, 11 games with 20 points or more, three games with 30 or more. He's really having a good year. See if they can get into the finals and can continue to play yeah, well. Van Buren has some scores, and I they think that, that's underway. That could, that could be a factor heading into the tournament. Yep. In the NWC, Mark, Lincoln View had already clinched the outright yep. league title. They beat Paulding 50-38, uh, to 38, so they, they completed the undefeated conference schedule. And now, top to bottom, this conference is still very strong. We said it at the beginning, only two teams under 500. Paulding has the worst overall record, and they're 10 and 12. So that just goes to show you yeah. how difficult of a conference it was to play in, and it speaks to Lincoln View's accomplishment of going unbeaten. Yeah, really good. And obviously, that Paulding is going to be a tournament challenge for somebody when they get out there and get matched up. And kind of got crossed in our brackets, didn't we? Because we're going to end up with uh, Van Buren's going to play um, the... Uh, uh, 
Is it Div Division Four? Div Division yeah. Four, yeah. yeah. And they're going to get up there and not right. crush you. So I got to turn around our brackets a little bit there. I'm hoping to get those straightened out. So yeah, well, there's a lot of brackets yeah. to take into account. But Too this, many notes. This Lincoln View, Crestview, Crestview's at the bottom of right. this Lincoln View bracket. We have yeah, Lincoln View, Spencerville, right. Crestview, Jefferson. And the, this is the D4 Elida one, while the Spencerville's in Division Three, of course, with Jefferson in Division Three and that Lima Senior one. But of those four teams, the top of the NWC, is Lincoln View still the favorite to go the furthest? Well, they are the favorite. And once again, we've kind of gone through all those things. We can kind of straighten them out now. Down or waiting for them is that Crestview matchup and right. those types of teams. And the other way we're going to tell us Van Buren's going to get uh, Liberty Benton. So that, that kind of gets all that straightened out. But yeah, I would think so. Liberty Benton or uh, Li Excuse me. Lincoln View looks like a match to get to the finals in that particular division, but then waiting for them will be a good opponent. And along with Lincoln View and Crestview, there's lots of PCL teams in that right. Elida district. The league champs Collada open up against Delta St. John's on Tuesday. Grove against Antwerp. You've got Fort Jennings, Ottoville on Tuesday. Big Green won that regular season meeting. Lipsick, Continental. I mean, which of these PCL teams has a chance at knocking off Lincoln View and or Crestview, because those are the top two seeds. Well, again, if we're going to go with any of them, we're going to go with Lipsick out of that, because I think Lipsick is really playing well right now. You mentioned you got a score like Brown. When you got one guy like that, and you can fill him with a lot of pieces around him, Scott Mangus has been through this before as a coach. I think the, the, if there is a team that comes out of there, it does. I think that's going to be Lipsick. All right, to the Mac now. Versailles, yep. they're a little ahead. I believe yep. they're sectional champs already. They beat Arcanum, and now they'll play Greenview in the district semis on Wednesday. Meanwhile, Coldwater lost to St. Henry in the regular season finale, and the Cavs play either Cary or Bluffton on Friday. And then we've got lots of MAC teams in the Wapak district. And remember, St. Henry finished second in the league. They'll play either New Knoxville or Harden Northern on Friday. Any team stand out to you in the MAC that can make a run? I, I, I think Coldwater's in a little bit suspect position right now. They've, they're, what, 5-5 five and five in their last 10. It looks like they could get a Bluffton team that's going to get rumor back who's missed a couple of games from them. I would look for if, particularly, I mean, Bluffton has to win a game on Tuesday, on Wednesday night. But if they do, look for Bluffton and Coldwater to be a really good basketball yeah, game. Bluffton's a tough out. Marion yep. Local plays Spencerville. And then you, you had Fort Recovery beating Marion Local in their league finale. And Minster gets the winner of Ada and New Bremen. So, I mean, there's a lot of intriguing yeah. matchups coming up in, in this week. Ada's won some games recently, too. They can be a challenge as we get into the tournament. Uh, I really look at what's going to happen with Fort Recovery. Now, first of all, it looks like they're going to play Upper Soda Valley, who's won like 12 out of 13 games. So that's a really good matchup right there. The winner's going to get Perry. And Perry could be in some trouble. I, I, I just because I think we got a, some really solid teams there with Upper Soda Valley or with, uh, uh, with Fort Recovery. I saw Fort Recovery against Marion Local. They played very good defensively, constantly changing things up. They're a good, solid rebounding team with five guys that can score. Fort Recovery might well be the sleeper in that bracket. Yeah, that Fort Recovery, when I saw that bracket, that's, I was looking at yep. that matchup saying, ooh, that, that's going to be a pretty good one if we get there. Now, right. Perry, a lot of NWCC teams right. in this Wapak district, and the league champs Perry will play either Temple or Ridgemont, and the, the Pioneers won the regular season meeting against the Golden Gophers. So let's say it's Temple, Temple Perry. I mean, that could be even interesting, right? Because Temple Christian has guard play. When you have good guard play, you can handle some of that pressure that they do. Certainly Perry will be favored, but, but that's correct. But if you want to go back to Upper Soda Valley, I worked with B.J. McFerrin the other night and when we did the game down at Marion Local. Of course, he does a lot in the NWCC. He said, don't leave out USV yeah. because they're really playing well right now and people tend to overlook them a little bit. So if we have a USV Fort Recovery game, that could be a great basketball game. Yeah, definitely a good one there. And, and BJ would know. I mean, he's yeah, the team. He, knows, he's he works right. at Temple. He does a lot of roughing like you. Right. He's been around. So Perry, meanwhile, if they do win the district, it'll be their first time in 13 years. Yeah. Do you still think they're one year away or is this the year? I, I think they have enough talent and enough experience. Those guys all played last year. Glover didn't. He came in, obviously, from Lima Messina. But the other guys have all played a lot of basketball. They we were in that tournament a year ago, won some big games at Bath last year when the tournament was there. So I don't think it's necessarily that they're too young to win this year, although they are four of their key players or juniors. I think the key is the type, the type of competition they're going to match up against. All right, let's close out with the Shelby County League. And we know the league champs, Rushi, that was already decided. Mm -hmm. They'll play Lehman Catholic on Tuesday in a sectional final. And Fort Laramie faces Mississinawa Valley Tuesday. Could play Rushi in the district semis. Rushi won both regular season meetings against Fort Laramie. Yeah, that's really hard. You know, how many times have we talked about how hard it is to beat a team three times during the course of the year? But the way the Rushi Raiders are playing right now, I started getting my pencil out and putting them out on the bracket. Yeah, they're, they're looking pretty they're really good. good. They've really improved, especially yeah. from where we thought they might be in the beginning of the season, graduating all those seniors yeah. from a year ago. And then in Division Three, Anna plays Franklin Monroe on Wednesday in a sectional final. You saw the Rockets towards the, I think it was last week. Yeah. I mean, they're not a team you can count out either. They've got good balance scoring. They've got a guard that can handle the basketball. They've got a little bit of size interior. They've got an experienced team, an experienced coach. They could be a tough out too. 
So which games are you looking forward to? You can take them from Tuesday, oh Wednesday. We can jump ahead to Friday, Saturday. It's up to you. You tell me what you're looking forward to. Well, if we're, if we're just picking games, first of all, let's, let's look at what could happen, you know, when we see Bluffton and Cobalt. I think that could be a really good matchup. Oh, I'm a little bit prejudiced because I get to call that game. Yeah. So I'm a little bit prejudiced looking forward to see how that particular game goes. And then I, I think Spencerville's an easy win over Marion Local. They just defeated them. And Marion Local didn't look very good on Saturday night. So I think Spencerville's in a really good spot. Looking at good games, let's look, go back to Lipsick and Grove and, and Crestview and how all that. I just think that whole bracket's a great matchup. That probably is the most competitive really one at is. this point. Yeah. And we'll see how it plays out. We've got a lot of rebroadcast games, as you would expect, coming your way on our rebroadcast schedule. Let's take a look at what you can watch when and where. And it all begins on Wednesday, 7 p.m., with that Salina Wapakoneta WBL rematch in the Division Three and Division Two sectional semifinals from Lima Senior. Wednesday at 8.30, Collada versus Delphi St. John's, D4 sectional semis. Thursday at 7.30, some ONU women's basketball live. It'll be the OAC semifinal, either against Heidelberg, Otterbein, or Baldwin Wallace. Still yet to be decided. If the Polar Bears win, we will also have the OAC final on Saturday, live at 3 p.m. Friday at 10.44, WTLW after the 44 on 44 sports report. Carrie versus Bluffton, or excuse me, the winner of Carrie and Bluffton. That one will be played out, what is that, Tuesday or Wednesday? Wednesday. 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 Against Coldwater. That'll be a Division IV sectional final. Saturday at 8.30 p.m., the Elida Bath winner will meet up with Shawnee, Division II sectional final from Paulding. Then Saturday at 10.30, it'll be Delphus Jefferson against the winner of Wayne Trace and Allen East. That's a D3 sectional final. Saturday, 10.30 on WTLW, the other game from Van Wert, Marion Local versus Spencerville, the D3 sectional final. Sunday at 7 p.m., Little Girls Hoops, Division Three District Final at Elida. It's either going to be Fort Recovery or LB taking on Columbus Grove or Coldwater. And then Sunday at 8.30, Division Two District Final at Paulding, all WBL there, OG Girls or Salina, whoever wins that one, taking on Bath or Wapakoneta. And you can always head over to the website, WOSN.TV, for the full schedule, including replay times. That's a good practice to do now just because things are changing so quickly with matchups and, you know, our schedule is getting yep. set the week before. So if you want to stay on top of it, check it out online at WOSN.TV. Thank you so much yep. for everything that you do all season long, Mark Shine. It's a blast doing this with you. That does it for this week's Mark's Madness, and we'll see you next week.